This is the new 2023 Coruscant Guard Republic gunship. Releasing on September 1st, 2023 for 140 US dollars with 1,083 pieces and 5 minifigs, is it really worth the price? We'll quickly check out these minifigures first because I really want to move on to the gunship. The community has been very open and honest as to their criticisms for the minifigures in this set, mainly just one in particular. But my favorite minifigures, and I think the highlight minifigures of this set, are the new Chancellor Palpatine and Padme Amidala. Now these are two characters that we don't get in minifigure form often, at least not in his Chancellor era, so it's definitely a treat to be getting them. And their printing looks fantastic, the Chancellor has an amazing row print that goes down onto that slope brick that they use for the legs. And then I would have liked some leg printing for Padme, because I do think this outfit has some thigh holsters, but it doesn't look too bad. With the both of them also having an alternative facial expression. And next up we have two standard phase 2 Coruscant Guard Shock Troopers, and I think these guys look amazing, their printing looks fantastic, and I'm not somebody that's bothered by the new helmet holes so I don't mind that, and I do appreciate that they let us use the accessories on regular clones as well. So I think both of these guys are essentially slam dunk clone minifigures. But the one minifigure that's certainly not a slam dunk, and the one with the most buzz around him, Commander Fox. And Commander Fox does come with some clone accessories of the rangefinder and the visor, but I just have those taken off for the sake of this review so we can get a full look at the minifigure. And because this minifigure has been so heavily criticized, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the few issues that the community has had with him, and then I'll give my opinion on those issues. First up, we have the lack of a cloth camo. Instead, one is printed on the legs. Then we have an inaccurate chest print with a slight pink hue on the white parts of the armor. And then lastly, the helmet. I haven't heard this complaint as much as the other two, but I think the complaint here is that that stripe down the middle on top is a little too skinny. Now back down to the printed camera, and to me this is unfortunate but it's expected. I personally think if you expected a cloth camo on this set, you had your expectations just a little bit too high. And there's nothing wrong with that, because we've gotten cloth camas in years past, and I know we all prefer a cloth camo over a printed one. But, the most recent form of camo that LEGO Star Wars has released was with the 187th clones and the 501st commander in the battle pack, and all of those had printed camas as well. So it only makes sense that that practice continues on this minifigure. And personally, I think if LEGO is going to keep camas as leg prints, the print needs to extend around to the side of the legs. And I know that that's very expensive, but it just looks too jarring that this camo print just cuts off on the sides and then it's completely plain. Next up is the chest armor. And this thin white strip underneath the breast is actually supposed to be red like the rest of his armor and not white. And personally, that's not a huge deal for me, but it is factually inaccurate. And also because the base color of this minifigure part is red, the white printing on top comes out with a slight pink hue and certain lighting, and that's really not the best. More often than not, when I'm playing with this, it looks more white than it does pink, but in certain lighting conditions, it definitely does have a pink hue. And then finally, the helmet. And that stripe down the middle is just way too skinny. Which I would assume is some sort of printing or manufacturing limitation, but the regular Coruscant Guard Shock Troopers have a very thick stripe on the top of their helmet, so I'm not sure why Fox's is so thin. But my overall opinion on Fox is that, yes, he is factually inaccurate in some areas, and he does have some flaws with that white on red printing on his chest. But I like him. I think a red clone looks pretty damn cool. He's like a 6 or 7 out of 10. But there is validity to the community's complaints regarding accuracy on the chest and helmet prints. And that pretty much covers all 5 minifigures in this set. I think the lineup and the figure selection is great, there's just a few flaws with Fox. But that took a little bit longer than I wanted, so let's toss those figures aside and we can take a closer look at the Coruscant Guard gunship. And the Coruscant Guard gunship is a color scheme for a gunship that we've never gotten in LEGO form before, and I'm all for LEGO doing Legion and Battalion exclusive builds like this. I think it's about time we got a different variant of the gunship anyways, and I'm really hoping this opens the door to maybe some Munilus 10 or other Legion specific large builds. As with every Republic gunship, we of course have these chin mounted ball turrets that can be angled to hit almost anything, and these ones seem much more stable and secure than ones from years past. I remember on my 2008 gunship, each time I would move these ball turrets, they would fall off. But luckily while posing, playing with, and building this set, I haven't had these fall off a single time. Moving just behind the front cannons, we actually do have a front compartment very similar to previous gunships, but there's nothing in there. Which I'm a little disappointed about. We knew from their reveal pictures that there wasn't any sort of side build, but it does seem a little odd to include this front compartment and then not actually advertise any play features in here. But on the bright side, this area gives me an idea for a very small alternate build that we can use to take care of this space. But now we'll go ahead and close up these side doors, and then we have some decent shaping going up along the front and the sides to build up to our pilot and co-pilot seat. And both seats have essentially the same structure and design, with the minifigure only attaching by two studs on the bottom, and then a control panel at the front to help them fly the ship. And then just between the cockpits, there's a very small 1x1 Republic insignia sticker sitting on that cheese wedge. And this set does only have five stickers, these two small ones on either side of the cockpit, these two on the two front compartments, and then one more that we'll take a look at later. 
And before we head down into the trooper bay, we're going to continue down the main fuselage of the ship up to this carry handle. And this carry handle is conveniently located. It's almost in the center of gravity with the front of the ship tilting up just a little bit. And then on the sides of the main body beneath the handle, there's a nice mix between regular bricks and masonry bricks and a few snot techniques to add in a little bit of depth and detail on the otherwise plain sides. But now we'll move back up top and we can check out these engine and rocket pods. And the build for the engine pods is much smoother, sleeker, and stable than previous versions of the gunship we've had, and I think the shaping is amazing as well. And in between the two engines, this area is very plain. I guess there's not really much going on on the gunship up here anyways, but I do really miss the old flick fire missile feature. And moving into the wings from the engine pods, the wings are also very secure and stable, just like many other parts of this gunship. And compared to gunships of years past, I think LEGO did an amazing job making sure that this one was very secure and stable. Once attached, the wings on this set actually can't come off until you remove that gray Technic pin on the inside. Whereas on previous models of the Republic gunship, these wings were only attached by two hinge pieces. Most importantly about the wings is now on the very tips, instead of those ball turrets that we're familiar with, we now have these stud shooters. And you can see that LEGO used some angled pieces to try and resemble that ball turret shape. Even on the bottom of the wings, they used some rounded bricks to try and give it a decent look. And overall, it's a very solid little build, and it's probably the best spot that LEGO could work in the token stud shooter playability feature. And this doesn't have anything to do with the LEGO model in particular, but me personally, these wing bubble turrets have never really made sense to me. Like if I were a clone, sitting in this seat would be a hard sell. I've seen what happens when you're in the main character ship, and I've seen what happens when you're not in the main character ship, and the guy sitting in this bubble turret is never gonna live. That has nothing to do with the review, I just figured I'd take the chance to say it since we're talking about the Republic gunship. And now that we've covered the entirety of the wings, let's go ahead and flip the gunship around and we can take a peek at the rear side. And on the back side of the gunship, we of course have the very ends of the engines with a little bit of grill detailing built into the body in the middle. And then underneath that, we have a rear facing turret on a ball joint. And because it's on that ball joint, it's of course going to have many different angles that it can hit to keep any pursuers at bay. And then on either side of this rear turret, you do have one small storage crate where you can fit some smaller blasters. But then underneath all of this, we have our rear access door, with a small amount of tile detailing on the door itself, and then the fifth and final sticker that this set has. And the door opens simply enough, with some hinges at the bottom to give you access to your trooper bay. And now that we've finally covered the rest of the exterior space, let's go ahead and fold up that rear access door, and we can take a closer look at the trooper bay. And in order to get access to our trooper bay, we just need to push on this gray Technic lever back here to open up these side doors. And with this version of the gunship, as you can see, it is just one very large door that slides back rather than two doors that open to the front and back. And because it's just one door, it is much more secure and stable, but it is very hard for me to get my fingers back here to position my minifigures. But you do have a decent carrying capacity back here. I went ahead and grabbed my rad alternate build and peeled off some of those troopers to try and fit them in, and I think I was able to fit a total of nine troopers in here. And keep in mind that some of these guys did have backpacks on, and I was only setting them on studded surfaces. I wasn't putting in any minifigures loosely. So if you do toss in a few minifigures loosely, or plan on modifying the surfaces in there, I'm willing to bet you could get close to 15 troopers. But there isn't really much else going on inside the trooper bay. It's left purposely plain so we can fit in as many minifigures. And with that little bit on the trooper bay, that pretty much covers the entire course on Guard Republic gunship. And my overall opinion on this set is that it's great. The price point isn't my favorite, I think 120 or 130 might have been a little bit more fair. It's a fresh new color scheme on the Republic gunship, and this is arguably the most stable and secure gunship that they've ever built. And the minifigure lineup is fantastic, despite some of the flaws with... him. But let me know what you guys think of this set and my review down in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you think it's worth the $140? And do you think I reviewed it fairly? I'm incredibly excited to dive into modifying this set and doing that small alternate build I have planned for the front compartment. But that's a video for another day. So other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace, fellas.